This morning, I'm talking about a subject that I happen to think about a lot. I don't know about you, but as we talked about last week in the signs of the times, I think about those signs, but I also think about the time when the Lord is going to come back and we're going to meet him in the clouds, and that's called the rapture. And during that time, we will be removed from this earth in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and will, our bodies will be changed. Our mortal bodies will become immortal. And you wonder, if am I going to recognize my beautiful wife? Of course you will. So only, you know, whatever's going on, she's going to have her perfect body. Think of Eve, the first woman God made out of Adam's rib. So Eve, I mean, when Adam looked at Eve, he said, wow, way to go, God. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and Adam had a perfect body. And so the Lord is going to restore our bodies in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. That's what the Bible tells us in Corinthians. And I'll read that in just a moment. But if you have your Bibles with me today, as we talk about the rapture, I want to bring comfort to everyone here. If you're not a believer, you need to become a believer in Jesus Christ. If you've wandered away from the faith, you need to get back in the boat. You need to become a follower, as some people have called me before, a Jesus freak for Jesus. <laughs> My family, when I came to Christ, thought I overdosed on drugs. The military people didn't know what happened to me. My nickname on base, when I gave my life to Christ, because the missionary led me to the Lord, and I was going back to base, but I never attended all the stuff that I did before. And so the rumor, my nickname at that time was called Ike, for whatever reason. And so people are asking around the military base, where's Ike? He's not at the bar. Where's Ike? He's not ganging up with us. And so the rumor got going that Ike's dead. And I said, amen, I am dead. We're all dead if we know Jesus Christ. And we're alive in Jesus. He lives in us and we live in him. We all have the Holy Spirit living in our life if you know Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit leads us and he directs us. He's called the Paracletos in the book of John. John 14 through 16. That's the comforter. So the Holy Spirit walks with you throughout your life, every one of you. It's like he has his hand on your shoulder and he's gently whispering in your ear, do this. Don't do that. Go here. Don't buy that. <laughs> Things like that. He whispers in our ear and he leads us. And the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit will tell us about the future. Things coming and the Holy Spirit is reminding us today. So turn in your Bibles. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm not going to work with a lot of passages today. I have too many passages. I can't read them all, but I'll read a few. Chapter 4, verse 13 through 18 says this, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. So people who do not know the Lord, they die, and it's death. Those of us that know the Lord, we sleep, and then our bodies will be reunited with our spirit at the rapture of the church. So if you're getting older, just start like me, I'm getting older just look forward to a great nap. And then your body will be reunited to your spirit and you'll have that incorruptible body that will live forever and ever. So we, we, we want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. The Thessalonian church was worried about these people that already had died. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died, rose from again, and so we believe that God will bring Jesus with those who have fallen asleep. Isn't that great? In him, according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. In other words, at the rapture, those who have fallen asleep in the Lord, think of these thousands of years, they will be raptured, but they're going to go before us. But you're not even going to notice it. It's going to be in a split second. Corinthians tells us in a twinkling of an eye. Look at your neighbor and see how quick their eye twinkles. <laughs> Smile at them too. So you who are still alive and left till the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, see the Lord himself, will come down from heaven with a loud command the voice of an archangel and the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up. Say caught up. That's where we get the word rapture. The Latin word for that, it means caught up. The Greek word caught up. I'll explain that in a moment. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Encourage one another with these words, Paul tells us. So these are words of encouragement. A lot of times people are afraid of the day we live in or any day when the the world is in such chaos. It's mixed up. It doesn't know what to do. But let me tell you what. We do not need to be mixed up. We have the Bible that tells us the truth and we can stand on the word of God. Amen? Every word is inerrant. This Bible doesn't make mistakes. It's our blueprint for living and how many of you love the Bible? So the word caught up in Latin is raptos. It means caught up. The Greek word is harpazo. And it's the same word mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, where Paul the apostle tells us that one day he said, whether in body or in spirit, I don't know, but I was caught up suddenly, immediately, and I was in the third heaven. So what's the first heaven? It's all around us, our atmosphere. The stars are the second heaven in the universe and all that. Then there is a third heaven called heaven. And Paul explains that's where he was, that's where he went instantly. Acts chapter 8, 39 and Revelation 12, 5 tells us a similar story about being caught up. So this is something that's happened in our world before others have been caught up, and I'll explain that in a moment. Billy Graham said this, the rapture is a central part of our hope as Christians. It is, time, is, it is the time when we will be reunited with, the, with our loved ones who have gone on before us, and we will be together with, with the Lord forever. The rapture is a comfort to the church. It means that we will not have to endure the great tribulation, that is to come on the earth. It means that we will be taken up to be with the Lord before the days of his wrath are poured out on the world. So right after the rapture, we got the tribulation time, and I'll explain in a moment about that. But it's a seven-year period of time where there'll be all kinds of horrific, horrific things happening on this earth through the Antichrist. And I'm gonna mention that in just a moment. So Enoch, the Bible tells us, walked with God then he was no more because God took him. How about that? So I have a message on Enoch. Maybe I'll preach it sometime here. But the whole thing is I've prayed many times, Lord, what did Enoch do in his life that you just took him? And help me learn how to do what Enoch did. <laughs> so I've prayed that. I've studied it. Well, wouldn't that be great? You'll walk with God so closely, suddenly you're in heaven. You don't die, you're just there. So Enoch, Elijah was another biblical person. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 tells us that Elijah was taken up. So the chariot came for him, and Elisha watched as this was going on. So he was taken up. And so some people think, and I happen to think, that the two witnesses in Revelation are Enoch and Elijah on the streets of Jerusalem. So as I, you know, then John chapter four, verses one, the Bible tells us the apostle John writing the book of Revelation, first, second, and third John in the gospel of John, later in his life, he was probably somewhere between 80 and 100 years old, somewhere he wrote this book, he wrote when he was older, on the island of Patmos, where he was put because they couldn't kill him by boiling him in oil, he just didn't die, so they just said, Move them to Patmos so nobody has to see them. That was a big rock at that time. And John says this in Revelation 4.1. Then I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here. And I will show you what is to happen after this. And instantly I was in the spirit. So there's going to be a day like that for every one of us that know the Lord whether after we fall asleep or those of us who are alive, we're gonna go up there in an instant. Our bodies will be changed in a moment in a twinkling in the eye. So what is the rapture? Well, the Lord will return to take his redeemed. That's the born again Christians out of this world. So what is a Christian? A lot of people call themselves Christians. But do you think everyone that calls themselves Christians are Christian? 
I've been told by others that America's a Christian nation. I think it's a pagan nation. I think there's a lot of Christians that live in America, and I hope it grows and revival comes to sweep the nation in, the, in, 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 in reverence of Jesus Christ, but I tell you what, our nation's in trouble. And there's Christians here, and so I am so glad, maybe some of you aren't glad living in this time, I am glad I get to live in this time. I tell you what, something about men like a really good fight every once in a while. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I love it. Because we have greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. And God has placed you here during this time. He knows the number of your days. He's counted every hair in your head. And he's got to count less every day for me. So the Lord placed us here at this time, such a time as this. You could have been born in any other generation, but you're here. Body, soul, and mind, you are here during this time, and you need to say, praise God, bring it on. So the rapture is where God takes, the Jesus takes the, the, the redeemed, born-again Christians out of the world, and be sure you're a Christian. The Bible tells us in Corinthians to examine yourself to make sure you're in the faith. So a lot of people go to church, a lot of people might have committed themselves to the Lord, but be sure you are totally committed to Jesus Christ and obey him with everything you've got. And then the promise of the rapture is to us. Born again believers, how many of you are born again believers? Come on, you should be excited about this, yes. The promise is for me, say for me. The promise is for me, it's for us. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. He said in John chapter 14 to the disciples, that you will also be where I am. You know the way where I am going. What is the way to heaven? Jesus. There's no other way. No other, no other way. I mean, you can look at all the religions of the world. There's only one way to heaven. That's Jesus Christ. I am the way, he said. The truth. I am the life. And so if we search in other places, look for, don't do that. Follow Jesus, focus on Jesus, stay in his word. And the Bible tells us concerning the coming of our Lord and our being gathered to him. Say, being gathered to him. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Angels gave the disciples these instructions. So after his resurrection, Jesus walked with his disciples, the Bible says, for 40 days. 40 days, talking about the kingdom of God. Boy, I wish I could have been a fly in the room then. And then at the end, he ascended into the clouds, and then they were gazing up in heaven, and angels said to them, they appeared and said to them, why are you looking up? Don't you know it's true what Jesus said? As, he, as he's going up in the clouds now, he will again appear in the clouds. And so that's the rapture that was promised to them at that time, and it's promised to us, so he's gonna come back in the clouds. We will meet him in the air with all the saints that have gone on before us. We will be with him, and by the way, at that time, in the rapture, we are caught up. The rapture isn't the second coming. The second coming comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation, and the second coming, the first coming of the rapture, we go up. Second one, we come down with Jesus. And we watch him win the war, the war of Armageddon. With his breath, it's done. We will be with him. So we'll observe the war. We won't have to pick up a weapon. Those of us who have been in the military, we just let Jesus do his thing. And isn't that true for all of our lives? Let Jesus do his thing in your life. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, I tried about everything you can think of, but I said, Lord, you're driving now. I'm in the back seat. Control my life. I give everything to you. Nothing's worked. And so many of you might have tried that in the past, or many of those viewing today, you might have tried all kinds of things, but stop it. Get on the bus behind the driver and sit there and let him do his thing in your life. And so you might wonder, well, are we perfect? Well, yeah, you know, this is the deal. We, we have to fight our flesh every day. Paul says, I die every day. So my biggest enemy is Wade. Anyone else? So I have to prevent stinking thinking. 
So I have to die to that every day. It doesn't mean that you know, we, don't, we, we don't stop fighting temptation. We'll fight temptation all of our life. But guess what? God will never tempt us. God tests us. How are we going to stand in the temptation? We stand for Jesus. We say no. And so what I declared that I'm going to say no to all that other stuff I did, but yes to Jesus. That other stuff's my enemy. I don't want that. It's kind of like candy's my enemy. You know why? Because it kind of hangs on. Sorry that those, I like candy, but chocolate especially, but it, it, it hangs on. It just like never goes away. And so some of, you know, like I used to look like a V. Now I look like a pear. <laughs> but it's gravity's effect. It's constantly sucking on you. It has nothing to do with what you eat. <laughs> so the Lord is going to take the redeemed out of this earth. We're going to be gathered to him, and then this same Jesus that went up in the clouds is going to come back, and we're going to be with him. Isn't that great? What is the purpose of the rapture? You might have asked that question. Well, the Lord will protect the redeemed from the pouring out of God's wrath. God never wants us, believers, to suffer God's wrath. We might suffer the wrath of man, but we're not going to suffer the wrath of God. There's no way, since the Bible tells us, since we have now been justified by his blood, say by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Romans 5, 9. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us in Revelation 3, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world. How's he going, how's he going to do that? He's going to rapture us before the wrath of God comes on this world. The first half of the tribulation is going to be peace and safety and deception and all that. Mr. Nice Guy. Mr. Perfect. And then the second half of the tribulation, his real person comes out. He's the meanest man that's ever lived. He's angry, he's mean, he's ticked off. He's the person that is possessed by Satan himself. His name is the Antichrist. So you're asking, when's the rapture gonna happen? Well, I talked to you last week about signs of the times. And so, are you reading the signs? Are you looking on at what's happening around the world? All the miracles that are happening? All the enemy's attacks on us as believers? And Paul answers this question. When? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled. In other words, chill out or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter proposed to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, it says in 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 3 through 7. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revo revealed, the, doom, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship so that he himself sets, up, sets himself up in God's temple. What temple? The temple is going to be rebuilt, re re rebuilt in Jerusalem. And that temple, he's going to walk right into the temple walk into the Holy of Holies and sit on the throne and say, I am God. You can't worship anything else. And if you're going to follow me, you better follow me because you're going to receive a mark to prove that you are supportive of me. He'll proclaim himself to be God. Do you, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back. What's holding him back? so that he may be revealed at the proper time, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who, who, not holds, it back will con one who holds it back will continue to do so until he was taken out of the way. So think about it. There's about eight billion people, eight and a half billion people on earth right now. So I'm just guessing conservatively, probably about a billion or a billion and a half are believers, Christ followers in this earth. And so what's going to happen when the church is gone from this earth? Look at all the good Samaritan's Purse does. Look at all the Convoy of Hope. Every Home for Christ. 
World Vision, World Concern, all these different organizations run by Christian people and all the good that we do, all the law officers and people in the military that are believers are gone. And when we're gone, what do you think's holding back the enemy? Stand firm in Jesus Christ. When we are gone and the Holy Spirit's with us, when that, this world is gonna experience lawlessness like you can't ever imagine. Think about it. We're gone. By the way, what are they going to say? What's all this talk about UFOs? UFOs took them. We're glad they're gone. They interfered with what we wanted to do. And so I don't know if it's going to be UFOs. I don't really care. I'm just going to be with Jesus. So what would happen if the Holy Spirit wasn't present? What's holding him back? I believe we are holding him back. When we're gone, we are witnesses and the Holy Spirit in us and he's around the world. We, we are in Christ and we hold back so much evil because of who we are in Christ. And so we make stands for righteousness. We disagree with what's going on when it brings harm to children. The babies that are destroyed in their mother's womb. Do you know I was talking to a surgeon, I read a surgeon's account, and he said, when that little instrument goes up into the womb, the baby moves away. It knows what's going on. These babies, by the way, I believe they're in heaven. And if you lost a baby one way or another, that baby's in heaven. If you ever read the book Tilly by, by Frank Peretti, read that book. It's a powerful book. He wrote lots of books, but... The, 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 when we're gone, boy, I tell you, the greatest nightmare that's ever come to this earth is going to happen then. What's the date? Matthew 24, verse 36 and 42 says, we will not know the day, but the day, that day and that hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Watch, therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. Watch. What does watch mean? I say almost every morning in my morning prayers, Lord, I anticipate miracles today. Come on, say it with a smile on your face. I anticipate miracles. I anticipate your presence. I anticipate your coming. Watch. Be aware. Don't get hung up on other things. I mean, do your job. Be a fantastic husband, father, fantastic wife, mother. Do all of those things that we need to do, but watch. Be aware. For you yourselves who know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. We won't know the date, but we know the season. Amen? Last week in Matthew 16, we talked about this. He answered and said to them, When the evening you say, Jesus said, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red in the morning. It will be foul weather today for the sky is red and threatening and threatening hypocrites don't you don't you discern the face of the sky but you don't discern the signs of the times so don't ignore the signs of the times we gave several of them last week the signs of the times things we don't ignore that i mean we can determine whether it's going to be rainy in colorado springs whether there are thunderstorms coming in i mean i can see it <laughs> coming in toward my house i watch it so i recognize that recognize the signs of the times, what Jesus said to his apostles, to all of us in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Luke, uh, Mark 13, what Paul wrote in Thessalonians and what Peter said, but the very elements will be destroyed on this earth because the war will be so bad. We're not talking about us being there. I'm talking about this earth. So we'll know the season and then we must anticipate and wait for him. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, 28 says, And it is appointed for men to die once. After that, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Say, he bore my sins. I used to think, why would God ever want to use me? Who am I? After I lived that kind of a life, why would God ever want to use me? And every time a door opens in our life, I say, God, why me? My wife says, don't say that anymore. I always say, surely there's someone better than this at this than me. But, you know, I like to think this way. Maybe number one, two, three, four, five just, just said no, and Wade always says yes. 
By the grace of God, we are who we are. God's grace. So you wonder, why would God want to use you? He wants to use every one of you in this room. So we need to anticipate and wait for him. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together, the Bible tells us. Hebrews 10, 25. Come together as a church. Get together. Talk about these things. I like to get in lots of discussions, and I, I, I'm always looking for something about Jesus in a discussion. <laughs> you know, I like to fish, but I like to talk about Jesus more. You know, I like to do certain things, but I want to hear about Jesus. What do you have to say about Jesus? What has he done for you by the testimony that you have, that you're telling people of Jesus? You know, there's great power in your testimony, in your story. So what's going to happen at the rapture? Quickly, Jesus will descend from heaven. Say, he's coming down from heaven. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Lord himself will come down from heaven. He'll come down right now. What is Jesus doing in heaven? The Bible tells us he's interceding for us. He's praying for us. Jesus, our Lord, is praying for us, the children that he has. Those of us that are in him, they're born again. And then the Bible says his descent will be singled by a loud command from Jesus. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Now, what's going to happen? Well, only those of us who are Christians will hear that command. Only us will hear the trumpet. The world won't hear anything. We'll have a unique sound that we will hear, and it will be loud, and we're gone. That scares some of you? Very quiet here. Now, this is exciting. So I know you're not mesmerized. <laughs> but you are listening, and that's good. You can hit me afterwards. It's going to be a shout of an archangel. Verse 16 tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4. And then the blowing of the trumpet of God. So what is this trumpet? Many scholars believe that the archangel will be the archangel Michael. I don't know, but a lot of scholars believe that. However, we are not completely sure about that. Archangels do have the highest rank of the angels. There's different ranks of angels. You have a protective angel. I believe that. You have angels that come when you, ask, when you pray. I pray all the time, Lord, surround this place with your angels. Surround our house with your angels. Stand in front of our grandkids and our, our family's door. Don't let anything bad come in there. So what happened? They're the, they're the, they're the highest rank of angels, and some believe it's the archangel Michael that's going to blow the trumpet of God. And the trumpet of God is similar of the trumpet call found in the Old Testament when God was giving commands to Israel. Exodus chapter 19 tells us the trumpet of God. They moved with that. They heard the trumpet of God, and it was loud. Now, you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to go deaf, but it's loud to us. We're going to know what's going on, and these signals will only be heard by born-again Christians who are dead and alive or who are asleep and alive. And the Bible tells us in verse 16, the dead when Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive, our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Wow, this is very exciting. Do you believe that? How many of you are frightened? <laughs> Don't be afraid. Now, if you're not a Christian or you're away from the Lord, you need to be really nervous. You want to be ready. I mean, it's exciting for us to know that we are the children of God. We're Christians. We're born again. We are the body of Christ. And by the way, in the body of Christ, the scripture tells us get along with everyone as much as possible. So some people just bother you. <laughs> but get along with them anyway. Because they're your brother or sister in the Lord, right? So this gossip about another Christian, what in the world are we thinking? It's stinking thinking. It's not of God. And so we can harm another person unintentionally maybe, but maybe intentionally because something we say about them that's wrong. You know, you can say a lot of things about me before I gave my life to Christ. I mean, you can go back and talk to my high school principal that liked kicking me out. But I'm not that person. So give people a chance to change. Don't gossip. They make a mistake. We go to them. We talk to them. Go one-on-one. -on -one. Don't talk to people without that person present. That's what the scripture tells us. 
So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 gives us these details. How many want to see details on how you're not going to have to use mascara? You're not going to have to get your hair done every so often, once a week, whatever it is. You're just not going to have to do those things. And men, you don't have to put on cologne. You're going to look, you're going to, everything. so this is what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, say twinkling of an eye. At that last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ are be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. So all these movie stars are trying to freeze their bodies, freeze their brains, whatever, it's all going on, and you know what? It ain't going to work. If they want a body change, get right with Jesus. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying is written, will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? So the sting of death will not be felt by us. Amen. Give God a hand. So, if you're around when I'm dying, whatever it is, falling, getting ready to fall asleep, just say to me, Wade, you're getting ready to take a nap. Take a nap. Now, I believe he could come back today. I believe everything's been accomplished where he could come back today, and it is, should be exciting to every one of us. Are you excited? I am too. The next event, we're gone. A billion, billion and a half Christians, maybe more, maybe less, are gone from this earth. And the very next event, we've got the seven-year tribulation. Say seven years. The, the scripture is very specific about this period of time to the days. You can read Revelation. It gives the actual days. Daniel gives the days. One half of the seven-year tribulation will have a sense of peace. The Antichrist will convince the world that he can settle the wars in the Middle East. There will be a peace treaty signed. He will be very attractive. He'll be a handsome person, very attractive man that is unusually charismatic. He walks in the room, he controls the room. You've ever been around a charismatic person like that? You walk in the room, people look up, a lady or a man. They look up, they're charismatic, they draw attention. So he'll be a very charismatic man. He'll give solutions to the global economic nightmare. And he will persuade the world of the need for a cashless society. I talked to a friend of mine in, in the city that owns a bank. He's, I said, is there going to be a cashless society? Is it going to switch over to cashless? He said, I'm afraid it's going to happen. I talked to one of the founders of the Clifford, or presidents of the Clifford Swan organization. And I said, is it going to go cashless? They said, I'm afraid so. So this Antichrist, he wants a cashless society. And by the way, everyone on earth will, will must obtain an identity of their commitment to the leadership. The mark. I don't know what the mark is. It could be a chip. could be a laser. I don't know what it is, but we're going to be able to be identified on our wrist or our forehead that we are in the camp of the Antichrist. And those who, who, who refuse to do this, well, they're going to have to try to survive. They'll be killed. There'll be more Christians killed during that time than any other time in history. The Bible tells us during the tribulation, Christian, you know, people will wonder, where, where, where have they gone? Where where'd that Wade guy go? Well, I'm telling you, they're going to say, wow, I should have listened. I should have paid attention. He's gone. Now you got the seven years in this mark, and so they're going to have to die for their faith. The Bible says you can't buy or sell, purchase anything. So think about it. You can't use Amazon. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't buy a car. You can't buy food. You can't buy water. I mean, this stuff is going to go on, and the people left that get, and then the, the Bible says angels will, an angel will preach the gospel. The only time in Scripture when that's going to happen, an angel will come and he'll preach the gospel all over this earth. People will come to Christ, but they realize it's too late for the rapture. 
right? And so what we have, we have seven seals. These are judgments of God coming on this earth. And we have these seven seals and seven trumpets. Read about that in the book of Revelation. And so the, the one-fourth of the world's population, the Bible tells us, will die with the first judgment on this earth. So it says, I looked, John writing in Revelation 6, and there before me was a pale horse. His rider was named Death and Hades and following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, famine, or plague and by the wild beasts of the earth. Say one-fourth of the world's population. What a bloodbath. It's horrible. Then we've got the seven trumpets. There's another jump trumpet. So the fourth seal is where the one-fourth and the sixth seal, one of the trumpets, one-third of the world's population will die. So one-fourth, think about how many that is of eight million. So that puts us down to six million, right? One-fourth of eight. And then the Bible says, and the four angels who had kept ready for this very hour and day and month, that year was released to kill a third of mankind. So here we have one-fourth of just rounding it out, eight million, puts it down to six million. You got one third of six million, you got four million, half the world's population will be gone in that three and a half years. We don't want to be there. We did not want to be there. And so the War of Armageddon, if I could have our organist please, but the War of Armageddon will occur at the end of the tribulation. So these seven years are going to go by, and then the Lord will say, that's enough. It's enough. Evil is going to be defeated. Satan is a wimp. You're done. The Antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into hell by Jesus himself. We'll stand by around Jesus and we will be with him and we'll watch. We'll be amazed. Why didn't I believe all along that Jesus would be with me? Well, I'm watching him in action. A lot of us talk about the Jesus that walked this earth over 2,000 years ago, General Shepherd. He was, he was, he bad mouthed the scribes and the Pharisees and the phonies. But he loved this world. He loved it. And he gave his life for it. So this General Shepherd, so we imagine him, this long flowing hair and most of the pictures of him, he's not Jewish. He's Scandinavian. Jesus, we think of the gentle Jesus, and he is a gentle God. And he's a merciful God. And he's a forgiving God. But when we see him come back at that time, he's a mighty warrior. He's going to take care of all the evil in this world. So we might be. The rapture could happen today, tomorrow, the next day, soon. Right after that begins the seven years of tribulation. This Antichrist, this, this person that the world will respect because of his integrity, his mindfulness, his brains, his, his charisma, his authority. He will speak and people will listen. He's handsome. And the Bible gives us details on when he'll, where he'll come from. And I'll talk about the Antichrist next week in great detail. I'll give you the pro- profile. But he will win the world, but he will be done. As I mentioned, This war of Armageddon, the rapture of the church is not the second coming of Jesus. We're taken away from this earth before those seven years. In the second coming, we come back with them. We're not taken up, we're brought down. And if you haven't taken a Holy Land trip, you'll be in the Holy Land then. The second coming, when we come back to earth with the Lord, the earth didn't see him when the rapture happened. Didn't see us go. We're gone too fast. But the whole world will see him when he comes back. It's Jesus' second coming. It'll be glorious. It'll destroy all those who hated him and refused to accept him. And we're going to come back to earth with the Lord. 
and he will end this war of Armageddon with his breath. Now this rapture of the church is a single event. It could happen anytime. Only those that are fully committed to Jesus will go in the rapture. All of you look wonderful to me. You're handsome or beautiful. You just look wonderful. I couldn't imagine you sinning. We all have like this other life that we have to fight. Are you with me this morning? I'm pleading with you. If you're not right with Christ, do it now. Do it now. Every eye bowed in this room, if you wouldn't mind. Every eye bowed. Every head bowed. Eyes closed. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, lift your hand and say, I want to know Jesus. Around the room, the balcony, lift your hand. If you know you're not right with Jesus, something's going on in your life, you know it's not right, lift your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. Lift your hand around this room. Go ahead, lift your hands. I'm seeing these hands. Thank you for doing it. Continue to lift your hands. You're not right with Jesus. You know you're not right. You know you're not ready. Let me pray with you if I could. Everyone stay in this room. Everyone stand with me. If you wouldn't mind, I'm going to pray with all of us. Father, today, I thank you for every hand that was lifted. I thank you for every person that knows in their heart they're not right with Jesus Christ. They need to get rid of something. They need to change their mind about something. And they are not ready. And Lord, I pray for them. Lord, I think about these seven virgins that had their, their oil filled. Five didn't have their oil filled. Five did. You came like a thief in the night. The angels that had their, their vases full of oil, you took them. And the others, it was too late. A lot of people say, they're believers, but they're not. But Lord, I pray today, the signs of the times are here. We're aware of that. Help them commit their life completely to Jesus Christ. And I pray this in Jesus' name.